Good morning or good afternoon for everyone. This is how to calibrate your oven. Now, some of you, you know that when you're baking or cooking, that sometimes your cookies may be a little burnt, but you have the right temperature and the timing is right. Or maybe even when you're cooking dinner and you're like, hey, that chicken should be done by now. It's on the right temperature. It's I've had it in there for an hour. There's no reason why it's not done and it still looks pink. Well, did you know you're actually supposed to calibrate your oven? There are two different ways to calibrate your oven. There is a knob method for those of you that do not have a digital temperature guide for your oven. And that one's a little more complicated. Now, I'm not gonna show you that one today. I will talk to you about that here briefly. Basically, if you take the knob off of your oven control, if you have the knob type of oven, look on the back of that knob and you'll see actually like two screws. You would have to unscrew that and there's like a little notch. You move it over one notch, tighten it back up, put it back on and try it again. So like I said, the oven method with the knob to calibrate your oven can be done it just takes a lot more time. So you're probably wondering, what's the first step? How do I get started in calibrating my oven? Well, I already started over here. And let's see if I can kind of move you around here a little bit. Okay, there's part of my oven there. And I'm going to take out for you, sorry, I have the charger plug, plugged in here. Um, get my handy handy trivet. And I'm going to take out of the oven the mechanism that you need to purchase so you can get started yourself. Let's get an oven mitt because these are going to be pretty hot. All right. So let's get over here and check this. Uh, I'm not coordinated. I'll need to. <laughs> I'm a blonde, a total blonde. So, yes, I need two oven mitts. Otherwise, I will definitely burn my hands. Okay, so let's grab it out of the oven here. And what do you know? You guys are gonna be quite surprised here. This is, oh, get the glare, look. It says it's only 300 degrees in my oven. Now, put this down and I'm gonna show you what the temperature I actually have it on. My oven, remember that by the temperature gauge, says it's 300. I don't know if you all can see that. Probably not because there's a digital guide there. But I have my oven set for 350. So guess what? That means that my food has not been getting done properly. Let me put this back on here. So here's what you need to go and purchase. This is your first step. You're going to need, it's called an oven thermometer. And it's written right on there, oven thermometer. Sorry, it's kind of hard to, you can purchase that over at um, Lowe's, Home Depot. I, no, I don't think it's, oh, Walmart. I had to think, yes, Walmart. Um, I believe I got mine at Lowe's and it was about $8. What you're gonna do is take that particular ometer, or oven thermometer and you want to, it's pretty cooled off, but no, maybe not. Take this oven thermometer and you're gonna place it in the center of your oven, not on a cookie sheet, it's directly center on your oven. As you can see, it's got a flat bottom. So it's going to sit right there. And let me turn this oven off here. Okay, and I'll show you guys exactly, let's see if I can put you right over on this little corner here, how it's going to sit inside your oven. All right. Now you'll have to excuse the fan. Nope, I have too big of a laptop. How about over here? If you guys can see. All right. Let's pray this works. All right, so I think you guys can see right here pretty good. 
you open it and you actually, well, you can kind of see. Let's see if I can put this in so you guys can see where exactly it needs to go. It does have a little hanging mechanism and you can set it in the front of your oven, but that's not recommended when you're trying to calibrate because you want the temperature, the oven thermometer, sorry, to be surrounded by the oven heat. Putting it placed up in front where it hangs, it's not going to get that centralized heat around your thermometer. Let's see. All right, there you guys should see it. And then I'll come over here and tilt this down for you a little bit more so you can see it in the oven where it's directly placed in the center of the oven. And then all you do is, I promise I'll get better at these Facebook Lives. <laughs> Okay, at least there's nothing. This What you see is what you get here today. Um, what you do then is just shut your oven, start to preheat, set your oven temperature for 350, let it preheat with the oven thermometer in there, check it about once it's done preheating, leave it for another 5 to 10 minutes, so that way it's at the correct temperature at 350, and kind of let the thermometer bake, so to speak. And after that 10 minutes, take it out as I did, place it down and check your thermometer and see what it reads. Mine read 300. Now, what's the next step that you may be asked? Hey, my oven's off. Or sometimes your ovens come to you and it's already, cal uh, not really calibrated, but preset temperatures and your oven might be extremely hot and you're burning things and you're wondering what the heck's going wrong. It's your oven temperature. Now, I'm going to show you this, how to actually calibrate it, the next step. Once you figured out if your oven's too hot or too cold, and let's see. And this isn't going to do it. We're going to, we're just taking a tour. I'm taking you dizzy, 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 dizzy over here. Yeah, don't look at that. We actually had to replace the new um, vent hood. We had a grease fire in the kitchen. Okay, so I know there's a glare over here and I'm sorry about that. There's nothing I can quite do about that right now. It's just the way the angle, let's see. Does that help you all any? Not really, not much. Okay, so, but I'm going to tell you the steps. For this, when you have a digital screen temperature guide for your oven, you're going to actually push the broil button and the up arrow on your control pad. Hold it. Okay, mine did not flip. So that means it still says it's on broil high. That means I didn't push hard enough. Okay, so it's kind of like the trick, like when you do some cell phones, you have to hit like uh, two buttons at the same time, and I'm not coordinated. So let's try it again. Broil and the up button, and we got to hit hard. There we go. I know you can't see it well, but it's flashing zero. So now I want to up my temp. We're going to try it for 10 degrees, and then you push set. And that is it. That and if you need to decrease your temperature, you do the same method, broil, and you're going to push the up arrow, broil and then the up arrow. When it controls out to zero, you are then going to push the down button, either five to 10 degrees down, and then press the set button. So I left my thermometer back in here in the oven. Let me grab that back out here. Technical difficulties. It's an art form, people, I tell you. And 
I'm going to let this cool down now. And now since I have had it set to go up 10 degrees, we'll see what 350 looks like. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, so that is pretty much how you calibrate your oven. So if you're having underdone cakes, burnt cookies, your food should be done at a certain time and it's not, sometimes your oven can actually be your worst enemy if you don't have the right temperature set. Um, I know back in the day, a lot of people say that they just judged by how it looked and you kind of just got a feel for your own oven. But there are some people out there that I know that personally are not chefs in the kitchen. They need things precise. They need things written down. They don't want to basically guesswork at their oven and is it working correctly. To me, I'm, I was quite astonished. Um, we just, you know, remodeled our kitchen here and there are certain things that we still left to need to be done. But I did not calibrate my oven, and just the other night, I made chicken. Now, granted, I did take the chicken out, and I cut it, make sure there's no pink in it, but I had to cook it for almost another 40 minutes longer than it really should have took because my oven was, oh, I had it set for, or I didn't have it set, sorry. My oven was already preset at 300 when my digital temperature is reading on my display on the oven 350. So hopefully this will help you all. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, I'll be back with cooking live in your PJs here soon. Um, if you have any recipes or suggestions that you would like for me to try, you can go ahead and post them here on my Facebook wall. I have it set so that um, everyone can send me messages and you do not need to send a, me a friend request. So hopefully I can get some delicious meals here started soon with the correct oven temperature and it's not gonna cook me that, take me that long to cook dinner anymore. Well, I hope I appreciate you all tuning in and joining me for this afternoon. And I hope this has been very informal or informational, sorry and sticking with me with the uh, technical difficulties here. Sometimes it's when it's live, it's live. You can't do editing and you can't do, you know, tweak it to make it look just right or look professional. And you know what? I have got people contacting me telling me they don't want that. They want to see the real me, the real Bridget, what goes on in the kitchen, how does it look day to day, is it messy? You know what? Sure is. I've got some dishes in the sink that I actually need to wash and I haven't done it yet this morning. Um, so this is real, this is live, it's not edited, and hopefully you all can see what it's like day to day in a homemaker's kitchen. See you later, bye.